This particular video is going to focus on an example of a broadcaster on-air console. We're going to look at the Air 1, which is one that you've been using in our labs. It's something that uh, serves as a good example of the attributes that we associate with a broadcaster on-air console. It's made by a company called Audio Arts, and in fact, the console that we have in our studio audio room is also by Audio Arts, but you'll notice when we have a chance to go through that, we'll get a video on that one as well. Uh, we'll be able to highlight how it's much more complicated than this. So this represents sort of a traditional broadcast on air console. There aren't a lot of bells and whistles. It's made up to be really easy for somebody to come in, do a mix of pre-produced content, get it to whatever is the output is supposed to go to. In our case, we're looking at sending the signal to the computer. So now we're going to focus on this. I'm going to shift the image so that you can see the console itself and we'll talk about some of the parts associated with the console. Right now we're looking at the Air 1 and I'm going to start by talking about the input select buttons uh, and talk about the outputs as well. So when we are addressing this particular console, it's a little bit blurry, but you know from experience here that the buttons across the top here are indicators that are labeled Program 1, PGM 1, and PGM 2. PGM 1 just means Program 1 output. PGM 2 is Program 2 output. So the key idea here is that we can select where we want each one of these channels to be sent to. So if we have a couple of things that we're going to record in the labs, then we are going to select by pressing the PGM1 in, or, and that way it will absolutely, the signal that's coming through the channel will be directed to our recording. And that's our goal. We could press both PGM2 and PGM1 in. You can see that it's illuminated there. It's a little bit uh, harder to notice. But that means that whatever signal is coming through that channel is going to be sent to both locations. Let's say we were doing a podcast or a radio broadcast. We could send it to the broadcast so it's delivered out the, to the antenna. At the same time, we can record it. And so we can use program two to record and program one to send to a broadcast. So program one and program two are our controls that allow us to identify where the signal through that channel is supposed to be sent. We also have the Q button here across the bottom. It's only available on the stereo channels, our line input channels because we don't usually cue our microphone because we're usually listening to that in headphones. So the cue allows us to review and preview sounds that are in that channel without turning the channel on, without affecting the output. So it allows us to just see what's happening in that channel, make sure it's the thing that we want to add to the mix next, make sure that we are hearing what we expect to hear coming into that channel. There are a lot of ways in which the cue is valuable. So that is the cue. I'm going to slide this a bit so that we can take a look at the monitoring section across the top. The monitoring section is controlled here. We have buttons that allow us to select what the meter is going to show us so we can watch program 1, program 2, or external. The board is set up so that there can be an external input as well. And then we have the monitoring section over here with the same three buttons allow us to select what's going to come out of our headphones and our speakers. If we're working in program, we're going to be setting up, maybe in our case, we usually have the computer on the last channel. So if we've got the computer on the last channel and we want to monitor that, we want to make sure we've got it selected to program one. We've got our metering so we can see on the meters what's coming through it in program one. And we can listen to what's coming through program one on our headphones and through our speakers. 
and to the right of these selectors we've got our volume control for the Q. So when we push the Q button in we have to make sure we've adjusted that Q volume. Sometimes it's set up a little bit high because people are messing around with it and aren't really paying attention and so uh, that could be problematic. But So that's our output bus, our program 1, program 2, our monitoring control and selection section up top. Now we're going to pull back a little bit to take a look at the rest of the console. So in this case, it's easy for us to see that the on buttons are at the bottom for turning each channel on. We've got the sliders. The red sliders, of course, are our mono inputs, our microphone inputs. They're to the far left. And then every other slider that has the black slider cap on it is a stereo slider, stereo input and it's a line input so that means it's designed to take a higher level of electricity coming into it. Our microphones don't produce a great deal of electricity so usually we give them a little extra boost with a preamplifier in the channel. In this case we don't need preamplification when you have a line input so that's why one of the reasons why they're particularly uh, distinguished from the mono inputs. We never want to plug a line level source into a mic level input because that could really destroy things, could mess up that preamplifier. We also want to keep in mind that to the far right, that's where we've got our controls for our headphones and our speakers. We raise that monitor slider to increase the volume for the speakers and the HDPN headphone volume slider is there as well. So it's a very simple console. Our inputs are set up there along the back. I'll just give you a quick look at that. From the top, you can see that this one is set up so that we've got XLR inputs to the far left there associated with our microphone inputs and then our line inputs are all quarter inch jacks. And so that's how this one is designed and again emphasizing the idea that this is a simple console. It's designed for, for easy use and for lots of different people to come in. They'll know exactly where the inputs are. They're always going to be in the same places. It makes it a lot easier for us to uh, manage and it makes it easier for us to have multiple people come in and use the same room in the same way without a lot of challenges and that pretty much summarizes the example that we have here of our broadcast or on-air console.